the particles, the electrons, come shooting in from this end, and the antiparticles, the positrons, come shooting in from that end. And in the middle is where they meet, collide, and annihilate, and make that momentary flash, that reproduction of the Big Bang. Now, out of that, matter and antimatter emerge in equal amounts, and they go shooting out across the detector. Now, we've got to capture those things and look at them. So we've got huge magnets around the outside here that will bend the negatively charged particles one way and the positively charged ones the other. And we can also tell how fast they're moving. If they're going very fast, they bend very little. If they're going slower, they'll bend a lot. So inside here, there's sophisticated electronics. In fact, designing detectors like this is a challenge in its own right. You're making a high-tech challenge to science and technology to invent new ways of capturing these ephemeral particles, detecting them, showing them. Electronics inside here records them as they go past, and they send the information to a computer, which is like the eye that we'll see at the end of the telescope. And the computer will then turn them into trails that are visible. And you can see them presented here, three trails shooting out from the central spot. So this is a model of the detector. The actual detector we would have brought along, but it wouldn't get through the door. It's about 10 meters high, which is sort of up to the roof. And it's about 10 meters long, which is pretty well across the front of the theater. But my anti-twin is going to it, so let's see how he's doing. This is the machine that takes the photographs, and as you can see, it's no ordinary camera. It's as tall as a cathedral, and for many particle physicists, this is the most exciting place in Europe to be right now. We call it the detector. Normally, it's all closed up, but they've taken the end caps off for us so that we can go inside. This is the nearest that humans have ever got to the Big Bang, right there. The antimatter, the positrons, come in from this side, and the electrons come in from the other end. And when they meet, they annihilate in a flash of energy. And that's the key moment. Because for a fraction of a second, you're replaying the Big Bang at the start of the universe. Now, out of that flash of energy stream particles, just as particles streamed out originally at the start of time and they flash across this detector, which is 10 meters across. But they're moving so fast that they're out of here before you can say E equals mc squared. So we have powerful magnets that slow them down and bend them just enough that we can capture their passage. But at the end of it all, we're really reconstructing the scene of a car crash from the skid marks on the road. Now, the jumble of signals from the debris flying right across the face of this detector go down these cables into the computer room, and that's where we're going next. Well, this is where we work out what went on at the scene of the smash. And it's a pretty confusing picture. There's trails all over the place. And this is where the computer has really revolutionized particle physics. 15 to 20 years ago, you would probably look individually at maybe 500 pictures in a year, looking for the one or two that told the really interesting story. And if you had a bad day when the critical one came along and you missed it, that's your Nobel Prize lost. Whereas now, the computer can analyze thousands of these every hour. And what's more, it's programmed to look for the very interesting ones, and then you can spend more time studying those in detail. George Charpak got a Nobel Prize recently for developing this revolution. Indeed, that's a very important part of the story. We hear a great deal about accelerators setting up the conditions to replay the Big Bang. But we hear rather little about seeing the results of it all. And it was the development of these new special cameras, the use of computers and modern electronics to make visible these things that have really revolutionized much of our science. Now, as it was saying there, the signals are sent down the cables to computers, they're flashed all around the world. Scientists all over Europe and America even are analyzing these things in their home laboratories. And we couldn't bring the whole thing with us here today, but we have got the eyepiece at the end of the telescope. A real computer 
that's been brought here. My colleague Neil Geddes from Rutherford Lab is going to show us some things from this. So to begin with here, we've got a whole stream of noise on here at the moment. This is the raw data that's come out of the machine. The collision point is right in the middle and these are all the, the raw signals that the computer has received. Can you clean them up and get some real trails to, to look at? So the computer is now sort of responding to Neil's commands and it's finding now the trails of the particles. That you see them shooting across the central part of the detector, leaving the blue lines out from the collision point. And on the outside, you see these yellow boxes. Now, what they are showing is the amount of energy, the amount of punch that these things have when they hit the edges. So the big yellow boxes mean a lot, and the little ones mean a little. Now, the interesting physics in this is in the ones that are really carrying the biggest punch. So can you now tell the computer to throw away the sort of uninteresting ones and see where the real punch is? And after doing that, we've now got three separate sprays shooting out from that central collision point with huge deposits of energy at each end. So, that's what we've got so far. We can do more. Let's zoom in and see if anything interesting is happening right there where the Big Bang happens. The computer's now taking us on a voyage right to the heart of matter, to the very moments of creation. Let's see what happens. Right, so this is as far as we're taking it. The, the trails all track back, but you see these four cross at that point. Now, everything from here into the centre is, is not real. The computer has just drawn those lines in. The real action starts here that the annihilation that set up the mini Big Bang is there in the middle and there's a gap before the interesting particles appear. What this gap shows is that an exotic form of matter has lived for maybe less than a billionth of a second and then it has changed its form and produced the particles that the computer picked up. You see it there as a big gap and there's a little one there which lived even shorter. So in this computer image you're actually seeing not just the particles that we're made of today, but also recovering for the first time since the original Big Bang, the presence of very short-lived things that died out in those first moments. By recreating time and again the Big Bang in the collisions at CERN, and having this huge detector camera to see what happened, you can then bring them to the eyepiece. So you're looking in the eyepiece and seeing how matter was created in those very first moments. So thanks, Neil, for bringing that along.